Hey everyone, on today's episode of uh, Detour Tales from Hell, I have a friend of mine that I've known probably around 10 years, Nahal Mehta. He's a partner at ENIAC Ventures, a venture seed fund out of New York City. Wanted to get a perspective from an investor. Uh, what advice is he giving founders? And it's, it's really important that people hear this stuff, that it is very serious out there. And that if you're not taking precautions, that you will suffer and you will probably go out of business. But he left us with some very um, positive, encouraging words that if you are able to uh, uh, get through this, that you can really thrive. So let's get into the conversation. I think uh, all my founders and kind of senior leadership people will really love this conversation. All right, everyone, we're back. Uh, We have Nihal Mehta here, someone I've known like probably 10 years. I know we've definitely invested alongside some deals at some point. I probably don't remember which ones, but I read your headline of your company at least once a week that you guys are crushing it on some investment for the last five years. So congratulations. Um, What I wanted to do today is obviously give people a background on what you guys do, but then really just give people kind of information, what you're hearing and advice to like founders on raising money and how to navigate kind of the craziness that's going on. Yep, uh, well thanks Dee for having me and uh, that's a great bedroom you got going on in the background. So It's, uh, a, it's, it's, it's a guest a room. Background? Yeah, <laughs> well actually my room's actually much nicer. This is a guest bedroom oh, that's okay. filled with uh, baby stuff. Nice, <laughs> nice. It's about to be turned into a nursery for our second child. <laughs> awesome, yeah people should have Zoom backgrounds of like like the like chaos like just kids like throwing pillows at your head and yeah you know we're talking about that earlier because we both are dads and now working from home is like a whole nother dimension but yes. you know just trying trying to stay sane um so no th- thanks for the kind words we started ENIAC about a decade ago and um you know we lead seed rounds um in startups we're investing kind of one to two million dollars to start trying to get to a 10% minimum ownership. Uh, most of these companies are software companies. So we're all, in, myself and my partners are all engineers. We actually met a quarter of a century ago um, at, uh, as engineers at UPenn and then built a ton of startups after we graduated for the first decade of our careers and then started investing. Um, and, uh, you know, we, our, our passion is really getting companies through product market fit. Um, at the seed stage and then raising the series A. Um, and then usually at the A or the B, we're coming off the board. So we can just focus on that pre-product market fit stage. But, you know, we're, we're obviously very passionate about software, but um, the thing that makes us tick is, you know, founder market fit. Like when we find a founder where this is his or her life's work, um, we take that very seriously. Uh, and, you know, we, we love to support, you know, those entrepreneurs that are trying to carve the niche you know, their niche in the universe. Got it. And so what's going on today? So you guys started 10 years ago, right after the, the Great Recession. And, yeah. and you guys have seen like probably the greatest growth in our history. And now all of a sudden it's come to a screeching halt. You guys have a ton of portfolio companies, obviously early stage stuff. Yeah. Um, how... How scary is it for founders right now if you need money or you're raising money? Yeah, it's pretty scary. You know, it's pretty scary. <laughs> it's, it, you know, it, it's interesting because I think a lot of entrepreneurs have not lived through cycles before, right? Like basically if you're younger than like 30, what, two, like you've never actually built or worked through recession, right? Um, yeah. I think we're fortunate to be a little older. So we, you know, we were building startups in through 01 and through 08. And I think in general, the same rules apply, right? And so you kind of have this muscle memory from those times. And that is, you know, now is the time to really hunker down, cut costs, hiring freezes, you know, take it very seriously because capital markets are, you know, they are pools still around for the right things, but, you know, you should uh, not count on that. You know, capital markets are pretty dry, um, especially in the private sector, for a variety of reasons. We can go into some of that. But, you know, the, the, the TLDR advice we're giving our founders are um, in our portfolio um, is it, specifically, you know, at least a year of runway right now 
So, you know, make sure you have cash in your bank balance sheet for 12 months, uh, ideally 18 months. Um, and if you don't, um, you know, and if you can't get there from making cuts, um, you know, then try to raise money, even if it was at your last valuation, which may have been two years ago, um, you know, try to add another million or two to the bank. Um, who cares about that haircut? Who cares about the dilution? It's all about survival right now. Yeah. You know, th like this is the great kind of Darwinism of startups where, you know, the stronger survive. And even if you delete your business a little bit more than you thought you would, if you come out of it and you're still alive, you're going to experience hyper growth on the other side because your competitors are not going to be around. And you've created this amazing discipline in your business during this time. Um, now, easier said than done. You know, we're having, you know, our, our first job, by the way, as seed investor is that of a therapist. Like we're having yeah. talking to founders every hour and it's tough. You know, people are, people have to decide between like really hard decisions. Right. Uh, and there's so many of those every day to make. So e easier said than done, but if you can do it, now's the time, you know, to, to make sure you can add to your balance sheet and, and create hyper efficiencies internally. So what do you say to people like, your guys' ecosystem is obviously like pretty sophisticated founders, well networked, and that have potential access to capital. Maybe not in terms they like, but they have access. What do you say to like the smaller business person that has obviously been affected and don't yeah. have access to capital? Like, do you like? Because I was in that position once where I just said, "Fuck yeah. it, I'm not paying anybody." Is yeah. it? Do you do you little? Would you tell people, "Hey, it's time to hang it up," or would you tell them, you know? figure it out it's really it's a really good question I mean, that's almost like a philosophical question you know i think times like these is when is when really people are defined and if you can if you can really you know stretch it out and make it happen and make it work in this environment you know if you can motivate your team to take cuts or to you know to work for for less just to survive it you know and maybe that means at the end of it, there's a big bonus and there's some equity in the company or whatever it takes, right? To, to keep the lights on, um, you know, then, then, then do it. Um, but again, much, much easier said than done. You know, there's a lot of, I think, with the stimulus that's hopefully, you know, passing today or this week, like, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities for small businesses. Um, I think everybody realizes that that is the backbone of, you know, America's economy. Yep. And, you know, there's already a lot of suggestions like I'm in New York and, you know, we've been talking about um, literally a 75 K like no interest loan that by the way, will probably be forgiven, you know, like research these options. Like now's the time to grab that stuff. Uh, there's another one that was floated like 40% of your payroll will be covered. Um, if you have a certain number of employees, um, and so take advantage of everything, right? Like this two or three trillion dollar stimulus, like take advantage of that research, get online, grab that stuff. You know, uh, the government is trying to help small businesses. They have to, the Fed has to, the state has to. Um, and then just make it stretch out, you know, as a leader in your business, like talk to every employee. Everybody's got, you know, different situations, different family, um, family obligations and, you know, it's a case by case basis. Um, but if you can uh, keep on, keep your core team like somewhat motivated during this time, um, when it's over, you know, uh, make sure you take care of those folks. But I think it's all about survival, you know, whatever you can do to get through this. So that's interesting because I have conversations with some of my managers and I don't, and even companies that we're involved with. And I don't think a lot of people, and maybe because they're younger, don't have the sense of urgency and mine is like pretend it's all over and totally. and and operate that way and and i think a lot of younger people i speak to yeah you know i just had a conversation with people that are telling me that their business who are in the live event space or in hospitality that their business will be back at the end of this year and i'm yeah. saying says who there's no right. guarantee on anything yeah we're operating under the confines that like it's only going to get uglier. So as much cash I can shore up right now is my best situation. And 
it's it's good to hear that you guys are actually preaching that to people because I think a lot of people have this and maybe it's coming from the president who just said on a press conference that he wants to open up the country by Easter. And so let's just say it, maybe that does happen, but that doesn't mean behaviors haven't changed and things haven't, the world hasn't evolved in the way we're going to operate. And I think in a place like New York City, where you guys are, life's not going to be normal for the foreseeable future. So I think it's very different circumstances. And I don't feel, generally speaking, from young people, a sense of urgency. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree with that. You know, I think a lot of it has to do with living through two of these already, working through two of these already. Um, yeah. But, you know, you always want to plan for the worst and hope for the best. So I uh, totally agree with your mentality. And by the way, like entrepreneurs are, are going to be schooled right now. Like those that don't think it's the worst and plan for the worst, you know, are, you know, they're going to be schooled. They're going to learn. And a lot of businesses are going to go bankrupt. Like, listen, my first startup, uh, it was a company called phillytonight.com. I built at UPenn out of my dorm room and we had to file for bankruptcy in 2001. Wow. I learned it the hard way, you know, dot-com crash recession, nine 11 couldn't raise a dime, no online advertising revenue. I had half a million bucks on my, of debt on my balance sheet. I had no other choice. You know what I mean? And then you just, you know, you learn like that was the best experience of my entrepreneurial career because I, 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 I bounced back from failure. I saw that that was the worst and boom, it made me a lot stronger. Started four more startups after that, right? And then ENIAC. So listen, like a lot of people are going to be schooled. You don't plan for the worst. Okay. Um, but actually in America, you can do that as well. You can file for bankruptcy. Donald Trump has done it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know uh shake you know dust yourself off shake yourself off and 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 get right back up but yeah i you know plan for the worst um uh right now because we by the way the u.s hasn't seen the peak yet right i mean in yeah. terms of corona like we actually don't even know 30 40 days out right um and in some cities like new york we have no supplies um things are spiraling out of control. We're building hospitals on boats and in convention centers and in hotels right now because we don't have beds. So, you know, let, let's pray, but I, I think it's going to get, it's going to get, it's going to get worse. Absolutely. And I think f f on the flip side of it, are you seeing as an investor or businesses that are thriving, like, are you guys being opportunistic and seeing, oh, wow. Okay. For, from your perspective, I, I would say as an investor myself, valuations have gotten out of control. And so now yeah. I feel like it's all corrected and I don't want to be like a vulture, but I yeah. feel like there is an opportunity to put, to put money to work into companies that you do believe that will come out on top after all this. Yeah, no, I think that's right. You know, listen, Google was started after the recession of 01. Um, uh, Uber and Airbnb started after 08. You know, I think there's going to be fat, incredible companies that are going to start, you know, right now that are starting right now. Um, and, you know, ENIAC's mentality is we've been consistent. Um, and we've had a consistent pace, you know, through bull and through bear. And I think that that's the mindset, you know. Um, uh, it's also good to have, like, that, you know, to be in the game, right? You never want to, like, be out of the game for, for any time. Like, just stay consistent, you know, um, if you can do it. So, so I, I agree. I mean, I think that's our mentality, too, at ENIAC, is a lot of these seed valuations are going to come way down. They're going to come from, you know, the mid tweener seed stuff that you're seeing in the Valley to like normal seed, like six, seven, eight pre's for software at least. Um, yeah. And, and we're looking forward to, to seeing those and we're going to still operate at the same pace. That's great. Well, is there any uh, parting words you have for um, someone that's just freaking out right now? Cause I have a lot of friends freaking out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's tough, man. T you know, tough times never, Here's a good quote. Uh, tough times never last. Uh, tough people do. Yep. So that's it. You know, stick it out. Do whatever it takes. Um, if you survive it, uh, you will thrive on the other side. And uh, it's going to be, you know, we're going to get past it. It might take six months. Uh, but, you know, we'll be on the other side in no time. Amazing. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you, brother. Thanks for the clothes, too. Of course. <laughs> Mellow club all day. <laughs>